Greetings and welcome back to Factorio DIY World. I'm DGRAY and today we continue our exploration into this story mode scenario of Factorio. Where last episode just got some quests done, got messed up with the natives down here, got them killed and starts our first automation. In today's episode we will start working on the main bus. Um, I know I said I was about to do the defense but automation is always more important and uh, until we're attacked I think we should be somewhat safe. So if you think that's a good idea, do remember to leave a like and subscribe on the video. And of course remember to share it with all your friends so they can see it as well. So with that, let's get on to today's episode. So um, as we were setting up last episode, we were starting our main bus over here. And I kind of want to get lignite and tin and some copper over here so we can get some things going. As those are some of the main things we need to get going. Um, it will be a bit harder getting these two up and running automated over there as it has three inputs instead of two. So we might have to do a bit of finicky magic thing with that. So look forward to it. Uh, in between episodes, I also set up some loaders for this one instead. So we now have it outputting with a loader and inputting to a chest as that is way, way quicker. And it's completely free as long as it's going. So that is pretty darn cool. So as I was saying, we need to set up our smelting arrays for the main bus. For that, let's grab some of the belts we've been building up. Let's grab some of the gears and maybe some circuits. Not as important. Um, as any of you that's watched any of my older series to enter level 2 Megabase 1, 1 or 2 for that matter, will know how to set up um, what we're about to do over here. Now, if you don't, you can always go back and watch there or just keep watching here and uh, I will show you. So, I would like to drag this up a bit more before it actually starts. Um, not sure how many, what's it called, uh, belts of making the first go. But why don't we just move this up a bit to uh, keep it somewhat in line with our current output over here. So, setup wise, we did pretty much all of it last time. One, two. I'll change to loaders, what's it called, these instead. They are a bit more expensive, but they're completely free. And if there's one thing I like, that is completely free things. And of course, we'll have this going down the middle, outputting whatever we want to produce here, with the input being burner inserters. So this will produce tin for us, for a simple reason that it's a one input setup as uh, you see right here. For the inputs, we need one coal and tin, impure tin on the same line. So that is uh, what we'll do right here. Firstly, we'll have to get some splitters to split out what we want to do. So do here and here. We'll drag you this way and down. And this will go this way and down. Because this way we can get coal jumped in from over here. Let's get the underground instead. You'll jump from here to here. And from there to pretty much there for the next one over. In here we'll have to split it out a small amount. Does this give us enough room? We might have to shift up just one. Or even better. We can do this to actually save a bit on belts. So if we jump you from here instead. And from there. That will enable us to do a few things. Split it with belts to make it completely compact. With the coal. And then you can jump from here to here. So this will be tileable and easily expandable. That is uh, the way I like to build things. So now we'll have to drag in the coal. I'll just do this for now to see where we have to clear out all of uh, the things. This is always a good way to do things to know what trees need to get removed and such. And then go from there. Let's see, we can take the coal down. Ooh, that's actually perfect. Is it possible to squeak through here? 
it is. So, let's pick up all of this. It has served us well, but I wanted to output onto um, a build instead now. And let's get all of you out of the way. We still have some manual producing down south. Not sure it's really needed, but then we have... Ooh, that's a lot of inventory. Uh, let's give you a few here to grab you. And you can have that. Let's get a few more for all the pure ore we can't really use yet. So all of you and all of you. you. So we want you to go down this way. Either down through here or over to the right. So um, the easiest way to do this, if you do burn us, as we will, let's add you in here. Wait, let's add a few things. Power poles and burner ones, so we can actually find them a bit easier. I might want to actually just kid it around, around the right instead. But what if we do this? You can go here, up putting onto a belt, dragging it along. Don't really mind having them mixed, you can just kind of do that. Here goes the output, giving us a mix of coal and lignite. Uh, lignite is due for some production, so I don't know if we should split it up and just bring the coal in. I don't want to. Maybe just add the lignite to a chest and uh, use it afterwards, or split it into two. But for now, let's just get coal in. Let's check if any eye. Coal is used for uh, a lot of late game items, it seems. And lignite is used for... Oh, we do need for plastic at some point, but that's way into the future. And lignite is used for... Lignite is used for... Ah, just don't break. Might as well just take all of that out and then we can actually set up um, Stonebridge production if we just have Lignite as the fuel source. Not that much to be honest, it's more output in terms of coal. Okay, we'll, we'll have both. Let's... We just want both of them to go down the line and then we'll just take out what we need wherever it's needed. Uh, let's have a chest of both, just for now. Do this and say coal can output up here, just to have some storage. This is just uh, to future-proof ourselves a bit, coal go that way. And over here we'll have some lignite. Good, and they'll priority out that way, go into a few chests. Just want a chest full of each for now. And then we can always cycle it back into the system as we get going. And if we have a surplus, that will just continue along and uh, be fine. Uh, four stacks, four stacks. Get you fixed. And loader, loader, flip, flip. And now we'll have a nice surplus here to use for. A little old production here that we have. The rest, I actually don't mind being mixed, so we can theory take you this way and down. You right here. So um, I'll just drag the belts over, and uh, then I'll be right back. So we've moved over the belts that has hooked up to our little setup here. And now the next thing we need to get in is actually a line of tin. Um, right now we have one belt of coal slash lignite going, which is actually quite good. And over here we want a few belts of tin as well. Um, why don't we just start it here? And I'll leave a bit of room for more coal if needed, but um, we'll start you up here. As before. Let's just mark it out, then I will um, 
set up the mining with you guys, and then we will um, then I'll do this um, off camera. You have to watch me do it. So let's see. We want you to go around to grab that. Maybe up top and down. Or maybe just getting it through right here. So what if we start? We can go this way with, with all the tin. And from here, we'd like you to go down this way. See, about here. And to here. It looks pretty decent. Giving us um, a nice surplus of uh, tin flowing. As for the setup, we want something similar to this to output it. Let's grab some burner ones. And let's remove this one to have a few of them going. We're going to do. We can easily put them that close now as. Um, we don't need coal to flow in, at least not uh, as I just keep filling them up with uh, a nice amount. So belts, you'll go out this way, you'll go out that way. Merge together and then we'll figure out what we do with um, all of our useless uh, pure uh, tin. Which is actually completely useless at the moment. You go on the same one. We will get that off to the side. So let's split you off this way. And maybe do a bit of storage over here. Or maybe taking it off this line instead it might actually be easier to control. So let's take you off just right here. You'll go down this way. Then in theory we could split it off to different chests. Or we can do the even simpler thing, saying um, one, two, three. That should hopefully store enough for the foreseeable future. So we'll do that, that, ooh, that we can't do. We need double in between then. So we'll do, you go out, you'll go in. Something like this, I think. If we can turn this correct like that, you go out, you go in to another chest that goes out and let's make some more loaders and in. That should give us three chests worth of, uh, of that. A way to minimize this amount is uh, if I do this instead, which I actually think will look a bit better. Just using splitters instead. So let's craft some of you. Which is it's actually more uh, cheaper to do the other thing. But if we do that, that and here, we should be able to fit in three of them. Being out, out, out. And then we can easily expand this down as needed. So here, here. There and load up, load up, load up. Flip, flip, flip. And here, here. So that will mean we have free storage for um, for the pure pure tin that we can't really use at the moment. So pure tin all stored here. The rest will go over this way and help us out. So let's do. Boom. There we are. So I'll hook this up to um, a little uh, smelting array and then we should be good to go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Flip you that way. There we go. Your tin being uh, delivered to all these chests and the rest will continue along. So um, I'll hook up the rest of these belts and then I'll be right back. So I just got done hooking up the tin that is flowing nicely. We still haven't hooked it up over here as the last thing we want to do. But for now at least we have it flowing towards the main bus, which is the um, first step in uh, what we need to do. We could also remove all of this now as um, 
at least all of this should fill up as we get going. That's actually filling up quite quickly. That's fine. Fill up uh, very nicely with the uh, with tin ore and such, and get all them pure where we need to be. So, um, I just want this to get away, get the rest hooked up, and in theory, if you want this little setup to still live, we can always just do this setup next to it and do it with impure as well, just to have some for for right here. But um, not yet though, let's see here, and let's make a ton of tin, which actually is quite hard to come by. Here's more belts for you. You can go up this way and in. Yeah. And you will have, you can have some uh, lignite. Oh, that's a lot. But all of it. Or oh, some of it. Making sure that that run. And... Here. And... There. That should be the entire vein covered. Giving us a nice supply of tin going out. See, full, almost full. Yeah, what's it called? Yellow belts. That's probably going to attract some attention from uh, the natives. But um, that we can wait just a bit with. That's actually a lot before this gets in. And let's fill out some more of you. Get you going as well. Here, uh, and here. So, belts. You can go to there. Go to right here. Yeah. One more here, we can. Perfect. And let's give you some lignite as well. We do have quite a bit, so that should be fine. Simple stats, we have things going. There's more for you. Gotta love that um, even distribution. So, um, look at that. Nice output that's flowing. This should very, very soon be filled up. That's too much going in. But let's do a little lane balance on that. Just to make it a bit easier. So, you can go in here. There. And something like this to make sure we have two full lanes going. That should give us a compressed belt uh, of um, of materials going out. And let's just limit you to 2,000 instead. Does that mean we'll have... Oh, did I just completely mess this up? Yeah, we need to change this uh, because uh, at the moment it's not letting coal through. Um, just give me a sec to fi figure this out. So, I found a little way of tricking the system. Let's pick this up just a sec and I'll show you. So, the issue was that this one was not letting anything through because we had it led to only let coal through. So, I just had a little way around it. Uh, do comment if you have a better setup than this. It goes in here. If you can't go up to the coal, it'll output at the bottom. Or just output anything up here, go bottom. Then we'll go here. Then it'll output up here to the lignite. If you can't do anything, it'll continue over. So uh, that way, we'll always make sure that, that we get things flowing through. Hopefully, it doesn't back up with um, with things but we'll see at least for now as you can see it is backing up but it, it does some of the job i'll probably redesign this and show you later but for now we have tin flowing that is uh it's nice we have some fuel going as well having that little setup there we might want to change this will go down this will go into these that will give this fuel i'll give that fuel and uh, let's see if it works as intended there we go, you go up here, you go down, you'll start to grab it in here. And then if we just hook up the, the tin, like this, we should be able to consume quite a bit of this. Of course, we do need a bit more. As you can see, we'll just expand this down quite a few times to actually uh, 
make it work. The easiest way, take it, copy, 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 copy. That will give us a nice amount of, of tin. Let's take you up this way. Some belts going down. Belts going up this way. As you can see, already tin flowing out. And this will pretty much go into um, a main bus. That is kind of what we wanted to do. Let's drink some water as well. Yeah. And some food. That will go into, like I said, the main bus. Or into a little storage chest right now. It can also just build up in here if uh, we don't want to overcomplicate things. Yeah. You can go here, here, and here. And this will give us a nice uh, amount of um, storage. Might just want to, instead of use Lotus Head, just use the burners. Might actually be better because just be output anyway, and burners are way cheaper than using um, Lotus. Let's just craft a few of you. And let's say two, one, two, one, two. And there we are. So good amount of tin flowing that we can can pick up. A good way to buffer is actually just adding this anywhere. For example, we can just buffer it in here somewhere with an output quite easily. Or we can do it at the bottom. Let's let's make a buffer here. And it's as simple as this, taking a loader, adding here, and getting it out. And now we have uh, this as a buffer that can store all the tin we are producing uh, for future use. And for me to easy, easily pick it up and use it uh, up here. Yeah, let's skip you all. Did you forget to... Oh, oh, we don't have burner leech, do we? Ah, there's no burner leech, so we have to use Lotus. Good to know. If you don't know what burner leech is, it's where the burner inserters can take fuel from uh, a machine and use it to power itself. That doesn't seem like that is the case here. So we'll just do it, I'll say the old fashioned way. But the new way of doing this and making some more loaders instead. Now, but that's at least one side working as intended. We are consuming all the impure tin. So the next thing we need is um, is set up with bronze as well. Very important here at the start. Need for bronze gear, but that has impure tin and in pure copper and needs a ton of copper and a ton of tin but we require two items actually three items in uh, that does make it a bit more bulky than one of these since we don't have long-handed inserters yet what i'm thinking of doing might actually uh, if we're lucky maybe if you do this little quest here we might unlock long head inserters or we can do it the other way and uh, use a lot more underground to do it and i'll kind of show you both ways right now we have here then we'll have you then we can have the fuel go in the middle then we can need to output over into um into the belt We'll do two in the middle instead. Can we do something like this? Because it will work, but it will require a ton of belts. But I'll show you anyway. You'll go here. Because that'll mean you'll input here, here. I'll get two. That can in theory be impure copper ore and tin. I kind of want to have it 
what's it called tin and coal on the outside as that is uh, the low volume items and then have copper going on one main line in the middle we'll have copper grab copper grabbing here with on the grounds going bike actually we'll go out here and jump again this will be our setup with an output here it's taking all of it out with loaders i might want to get coal as well on this one because the burner ones but that is is simple enough to do so let's see how we'll do this output side will be over here so you'll have the same of there there clip you you you'll grab here and here so these two and then you'll have this one going over here you'll continue you will jump you will merge into we actually need two uh, setups here not sure if this gets too uh, cramped so we have to move it down one might be the case but then we can have loaders going out here into this one same over here same here and here with loader 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 making that so i'll just go and grab a few things to get this and then i'll be right back so i've made a bit of mon monstrosity in the last few seconds um so what you're seeing here is uh is my attempt of automating uh, bronze production with burner inserters which actually is a bit of an issue since we don't have burner leech um, what you're seeing here is we have coal going in up this way, merging with tin, going down, adding tin and coal on both sides here. Then on this side, you have coal jumping over, going up and in, merging with copper from the top, going in here and on both sides of this to go down to these, supplying um, copper to all of these and uh, outputting here to the middle. So all we need to do at the moment is uh, hook up our tin ore and we need to hook up what's it called or um, or copper and then we should be good to go. So firstly let's just split this one off to get in what we need. We'll just steal half from here as we don't have a second line just yet. Splitting it between tin and bronze production. It's not going to be overly quick at the start since tin is so slow. But it will give us a foundation to build on to actually just automate things. As you know, automating, automation is king. So getting that up and running is actually the most important thing you can do at the moment. As you can see, now we just need copper. Copper we actually have just above us. I actually didn't plan for that, but now we can actually go and grab it. So um, we'll need one belt taking in copper going this way. Let's see what we can find up here. Does, luckily it doesn't require any kind of uh, thing. And then we need the same setup as over here to filter out um, the pure, since we don't need any of the pure. So um, I'll just do the same setup. You can start pretty much here. And then you can... Let's, let's try and do the other one I was talking about without the splitters. Just doing it in a nice straight line where we filter out all the impurities we don't want. So you can just split here. And I want you to upward see this side. That'll be copper on the pure one go right then this way into a loader into a chest into loader 
loader chest into loader loader chest. Then we should be able to copy paste this over a few times to actually give us a nice amount of, of storage. There, there, there. Flip you, flip you, and flip you. Then in theory we can do that to get, let's see if we do it here, it should be able to line up. There. That's because then we can just Q click. Get a few more loaders, please. There, uh, there. Yeah. Making sure all of these will fill up with the pure, as it looks right now. Let's grab some more burners just to get the uh, things flowing and get all of this delicious copper in. And now let's just start somewhere in the middle. You can start here. Go across. The other, oh, the other one goes the other way. And we probably need to tap into all of it as um, copper is also needed quite heavily for all of our bronze needs. Yeah. And we don't have any coal on us. I have to go and pick up some. So oh, let's do, go and get that. So while picking up fuel, I also want to show that I actually fixed this this time. So um, the easy fix for filtering out is saying input. If you always want to output at the top, then at the bottom, and then filter where we need. But what I forgot before was actually connecting this one up. It actually outputs back down to the main line or straight ahead again, and then back down. If you do that, then you'll be able to run this full speed. Even if this backs up, it'll keep putting it down this way, trying to output it this way. And if it can't, it'll just continue down that way. And uh, that will make sure that this never jams and always uh, gets everything we need this way. Also enable us to have a nice surplus of items in case we need to fill up our burner in surplus and such. So um, I just want to show that. So now we should have everything we need to actually hook up the rest of our burner mine drills up here and getting the cup flowing. Hopefully not uh, having any issues this time. Like you saw with the coal, this is a bit different. We want this one to jam if these are full. That is kind of the goal. Um, so that's why this will work for our purposes. Let's get you hooked in and let's get you as well. There we are. A few belts and get you all across here. Let's merge you in like that. So we're sure to get on both sides. Then we'll take on a nice amount of coal. Let's do a bit of even distribution. That will make the first amount of copper go. And get this into um, into the setup. Let's just watch it flow. And uh, if this gets down here correctly, we should have automated the tin and um, what's it called? Upper production. Let's do this as that will make sure we get four belts of uh, pure going out since the rest will kind of get filtered out this way and should leave us with a full belt here if it's enough on both sides. The copper is going in at a much, much greater rate. That goes down this way. It goes in um, like that. Might want to fix this a bit so um, we can actually get a full belt going in instead of uh, half a belt. So Because um, right now it actually splits in. So you want one on each side of this one instead, and um, that's actually somewhat easy to to set up what I'm what I want to do instead. So I'll just fix it, and then I'll show you what I have in mind. So here we are, my solution for making it modular. It's not pretty, but it works. So um, what I've done here is uh, this episode at least is we've automated tin, very very simple. But because we don't have electric inserters yet. This was a bit more complicated and I want to show you my thought process. So right now, as I said, tin coal on the outside supplies these two. Both sides. And on here, 
what I changed is I wanted to use the full belt. So this goes in now, the same way as up here. Splits into two. And then we have coal going in, delivering it to both sides here. So we actually have quite a bit of, um, of copper flowing in. Let's get you fixed. This also means that now we can take pretty much this part, stamp it down below. And then we can actually expand out quite a bit of, um, of this. And I just want to set up just a few more so to show you how expandable this and how easy it is to get to work. So there we are. Here as well. Let's handcraft a few more of these. Actually get it out correctly. There, let's get all the burners in. Handcraft a few more of these. Get all of you down. And the same over here. Inputs. Inputs. And then we can start to get most of this automated. Look at that. A nice amount of... Uh, of bronze being made as well. Just to have a nice little setup. And I know it does take a while longer to do all of this the automated way. But since this is factorial, automation is the way to do it. At least I think so. As you can see, now all of this is working. We are consuming as much as we can. We are still lacking quite a lot of tin. But um, that will fix in the coming episodes. Where we can uh, start to get the throughput and in, uh, in what's called go along our quests as well. Let's set up this as the last thing this episode. I just want to get load in, load out to get this flowing. Let's get the same as over here. Please stack three stacks at a time and look at all that delicious bronze just flow. Not sure if one belt can actually consume all of this. It produces about one per second, so it can do 15. Right, we have 16, so that's actually just enough to completely saturate one belt. As long as the input can keep up, which might actually be the issue that we can't get it in fast enough. So, uh, so I'm pretty pleased with this setup. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode with me theory crafting some of the new not as simple things when you have to do finicky things like that. But do remember, I'm now able to take this place down right next to it and just hook up the two inputs and then we are good to go. So uh, thanks so much for watching guys. Do remember to like and subscribe and comment what you think about these blueprints, how I'm doing things and how the series is going for you. Share with your friends and jump on Discord as well. And with that, I've been D-Grey and I will see you in the next episode. Bye guys.